my god. <laughs> is this 2018 Maserati Gran Turismo C Sport with 17,000 miles worth it for you guys? Did it hold up after three years? Did it fall apart or did it hold solid? Let's find out. What's good guys, welcome back to Ron's Rides. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. This is a little different. I'm gonna just start this one inside of the car. As soon as I get my hands on a Maserati Gran Turismo, the first thing I'm gonna do is jump in it even before I go over anything else because these are the last of a dying breed. This is a 2018 model, uh, you know, where a lot of changes happen to the Gran Turismo, but this is a lease turn-in, which means this is probably going to the dealership, but there's one big factor that's going to determine that. We'll talk about that in a minute because this is a $164,000 car, brand new for this Gran Turismo C Sport. Now, Gran Turismo C Sport, pretty much Gran Cabrio, all right? Gran Cabrio convertible, all right? So I wanted to take this out. I mean, obviously, obviously you can see the Rosso interior, all right, Bianco exterior, because you can see right there, this is a dream for me because I would love a spec like this if I were to get into a Gran Turismo. Uh, white with red guts, it's just, it's, it's a given. But with that said, I want to jump into this thing. I guess I'll give you guys a quick overview. I mean, you guys already know about this car. It's a legend in its own. I don't have to explain it much, but let's go take it for a drive first. Um, top down, top up, test a few things, and then we'll talk about this car. All right, guys, so let's see how quickly the top goes down. First, windows up front, windows in the back, and then I think uh, we're going to have the top, yep, in the back flip up, then the trunk flip up, and then she's going to start to fold back. And I think it takes maybe about 35 seconds. I'm not counting, but you guys can check it out see what you think now all of that is gone that easily the back windows do pop up and the front windows pop up as well if you continue to hold the button now i held the button for the whole time so i'm gonna just put the windows back down on the front put them back down on the back and then you can see exactly how it looks topless now top up all right let's go for it see if it goes up as quickly as it went down, all right? So the back pops up, top folds up, and that's gonna come down first. The windows are gonna be last, so the top comes up, seals on from the back, and then the trunk goes down, top folds over, and then the windows in the rear pop up, and the windows up front pop up. Now these windows, again, pop up because I held the button the entire time so you guys know that you can stop the process when you want once you release the button. Shouldn't have worn a red shirt today but here I am matching the interior um, not on purpose this car was not on my list of things to get today but I came in to see it because I didn't want to miss it and we're gonna put the top uh, back down to make things sexy again. Uh, now just to let you guys know 17,552 miles I'm seeing on this car for three years all right 2018 17,552 miles and this thing was like again i think it's 164 thousand dollars brand new or 166 one of the two we'll take a look at the original sticker as well all right so quick stop at the gas station uh, maneuverability is pretty good i mean it's a very long car so with that said you know um parking parking sensors are a big thing here and also the reverse camera which they added in 2018 because it was regulated so now you have maserati's or fca's big touch screen that they added to the 2018 model toting it around in manual mode sport mode it's uh it's a little jerky <laughs> it's a little you know it, it wants to be driven i'll say it that way you guys can kind of tell the jerkiness it is ready to scream. So I'm not gonna do too much talking here. I just wanna drive it. I just want to appreciate this V8 engine. Cause again, guys, no other Maserati is probably gonna sound like this. We've gone over to twin turbos. We're going electric, we're going hybrid. No more naturally aspirated V8s, I don't think for the brand. So this is gonna be the only one of its kind. We'll say it that way. So let's see how well this works out for us. Shall we?
my god. Round two. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, the camera's just shaking everywhere. Actually, I don't want you to hear me. Let me shut up. Let me shut up and drive. Between three and five thousand RPMs is really when she wants to scream. Like three and Three and 5,000 RPMs is perfect. So far, everything's pretty solid. Um, I don't know, I, I, I just, I'm so in love with the sound that anything else would just really, it would drown out, you know? You don't even play music in these things because you're, the, the sound, why would you play music? Like. Last of a dying breed. <laughs> but yeah, guys, I mean, again, we've driven, you know, a handful of Gran Turismo's, Gran Cabrio's. Um, just, it makes sense why the, the, the convertible version exists because that exhaust, it's just hard to put into words. Now, I'm sure the MC20 will sound great. Um, you know, we've kind of heard it a little bit. Uh, we have to hear it in person to really, you know, make sense of it. With the engine being mid-engine, so you'll have it right in, you know, the, right in the back of you. Um, I'm hoping it sounds good and, and it helps it out. Um, but, you know, it is a V6 hybrid. But, you know, it's a tur but it is a turbo V6. MC20 will sound great. Um, you know, we've kind of heard it a little bit. Uh, we have to hear it in person to really, you know, make sense of it. It's definitely going to be one of those things to where I have to experience it to give my full opinion, you know, besides the stuff I see on the web and all that. So. So we made it back to base camp. Really, I just I was too excited. I just had to drive it right away. So I had to show you guys my excitement as I drove it right away. Now we'll get into this 2018 Maserati Gran Turismo C Sport right behind me here at Maserati Alfa Romeo. 
of Daytona Beach. Oh yeah, she looks good. Yes, she does. Even with the soft top, the Gran Turismo or Gran Cabrio was one of the best looking soft top GTs back when it first came out in 2007. Now it got discontinued as obviously as you guys know. Um, so 2019 was the last year for the Gran Turismo. Now we have the new Gran Turismo coming up next year and it will be electric for the Gran Turismo and Gran Cabrio. All right. So the coupe and convertible versions, electric. Yes, electric. So with this naturally aspirated V8, I mean, again, this is the last of the dying breed. All right. This is something that I feel like they may go up in value or at least hold their value um, from here on out because you're not going to be able to get an engine like this anymore. And you guys just heard how great it sounds. I mean, you can't really put a price on that. So I feel like if you guys haven't gotten your hands on a Gran Turismo, you know, now might be the time because again, Maserati is going to do some great things and the new Gran Turismo and Gran Cabrio are going to be great cars in their own respects. But there's only one Maserati GT from this generation. And this is the car that really gave Maserati the name for our generation. Now, with that said, Let's talk about the specific spec because there is something particular that is going to need to be fixed in order for this thing to stay here at the dealership. All right, now before we get down to the nitty gritty, look right up here. Shout out to Eric Hurd for showing me this car again. He let me know it was here. I jumped right on it, came right in, took me 20 minutes to grab my gear and come see this thing. While it's here, you never know how fast. Um, so make sure you check him out, show him some love if you guys are trying to get a car from here at Maserati Alfa Romeo Daytona Beach. Now, Bianco white, all right. You see the Rosso interior, all right. You see the nice plastic cladding to give it some more styling. Pinaparina design that you're used to for the Maserati Gran Turismo Gran Cabrio, all right. Tail lights, exhaust tips, exhaust tips are done in carbon fiber. Can you guys see that? I don't know how well you can see it, but that is carbon fiber wrapped exhaust tips to help that naturally aspirated V8 scream. See your third brake light there, plastic cladding there. That was a Mustang, of course. <laughs> you do have your sport wheels here, 20 inch, I believe, sport wheels, and we'll get into those in just a moment. Same you're used to up front, nothing crazy here, nothing specific. Headlights that you're used to, Maserati Insignia, all right, the front fascia with the plastic cladding there as well. Nothing too particular, nothing too special about this exterior in general, besides those carbon fiber wrapped exhaust tips, all right? Now, I was kind of avoiding the wheels because this is the reason why this car may or may not stay. Now, the Pirelli P0s look nice. The 20 inch sport wheels look nice. Even the drilled rotors look nice. But what about those calipers? Yeah, so Florida can be pretty harsh if you don't, um, you know, keep your car maybe, you know, sprayed down every now and then. This probably was a beachside car, which, you know, a lot of salt in the ocean and in the air will get to things like this and maybe get them a little rusty, get them a little faded, and it could get a little sunburn. We'll, we'll, we'll put it in that aspect. It's a sunburn on the calipers, but not just the front, but the rear. Same thing here. Not just the driver's side, but even on the passenger side, faded and rusty calipers. Never seen this before. Nobody here at the dealership has ever seen this before. You see how bad they are. So these are gonna need to get replaced. So anybody who does buy this car from this dealership, if we decide to keep it, those will be replaced more than likely. So have to make sure that it's worth it in the long run. I feel like it is, but you know, I'm being biased because I want this thing to stay around. So someone around here can buy it. But at the same time, those calipers are definitely something that, uh, it's gonna turn buyers away right away. So with that said, we're going to have to get those replaced. Now, I've walked around a car on the exterior several times. Have you guys seen really any other flaws on this thing? For three years, 15,000 miles, it has held up very well. I mean, everything looks good. Even the body of the car, no dents, no dings, no scratches or scuffs. And it hasn't been fully detailed. It hasn't been through all of that because we haven't gotten that far. So. Again, look at it. Even where you'd see the most damage right up here on the front fender, going along the side, it looks great. I mean, everything just checks out. It's just, again, those calipers 
This is the only real flaw. I mean, the check engine light isn't, isn't even on, and we'll go inside of it in a second, but yeah, this thing looks great. Now, rusty and dusty is this 4.7 liter V8, naturally aspirated. You guys know all about this thing. All right, so again, it's not cleaned up or anything yet because it's got to get inspected. But just to give you guys a rundown, in case you forgot, all right, 4.7 liter, all right, you're looking at 454 horsepower, 384 pound-feet of torque. I know that doesn't sound like a lot for this six-speed automatic, but you guys know the sound it makes. And these are Ferrari-built engines for the Maserati lineup. Now, 4.7, zero to 60, all right, 187 miles per hour for your top speed. Again, not the fastest thing in the world, but it does sound good. It's the driving experience. It's the feeling when you do step on the gas for these cars. And you guys need to try one of these in your lifetime if you haven't already, or at least, at least just appreciate what these bring to the table because again, we're not going to see these anymore. I mean, we already haven't seen them for over a year now, and we're definitely not going to see them any time in the future because of regulations and emissions. And Maserati is going to be making their own engines as they did with the new MC20 supercar with, it, with this Nutuno engine. So with that said, Ferrari had a big heavy influence on this. Ferrari had a heavy influence on the twin turbo V6 and twin turbo V8 models that are out right now. Fortunately, I don't think Maserati is gonna get their shot at a full naturally aspirated engine because again, things are going turbo, things are going hybrid, things are going electric. So with that said, gotta love this engine, man. Gotta love it. might find a lot of wear and tear is the interior but as you can see this is pretty clean guys for three years this is not bad at all I mean even the leather there's not a lot of creases at all if I really see any and again I'll let you guys be the judge by looking at it but it looks phenomenal for 15,000 miles so after three years of use you know I mean they didn't do a bad job keeping this thing up and a lot of people will have great back seats, let's be real. In a GT, in a Grand Cabrio, how often do you really have people sit in the back? Everything looks put together back here. I mean, your two USBs there, your cup holders, all right, your HVAC vents, all right? You have your Harman Kardon sound system right there. I mean, again, it looks pristine back here. It's gonna probably stay pristine back here even if somebody else buys it. The door looks great, covered in roll sole leather carbon fiber trim on the door right here all right aluminum trim black stitching yeah looks good guys with that Harman Kardon speaker up front you can see the nice aluminum MC pedals there all right you got the Maserati side sill as well it's just a great great spec you got carbon inside with the Rosso and Nero leather all right, that old steering wheel that you guys have seen in these cars plenty of times before. As you can see, 17,552 miles. All right, no check engine light or anything again. She's pretty solid. All right, now you do have Maserati's older infotainment screen now that they've come out with the MIA system. And this was new for the Gran Turismo because it was regulated in 2018 that you had to have a backup camera and the Maserati Gran Turismo, if you guys have seen any of the previous models, did not have this big screen. It didn't have anything close to this, all right? So you did get this set up for the 2018 model so they could just put in that, you know, a backup camera. So they replaced the whole thing. Obviously, that's why this is not symmetric here because this is old from the 2007, you know, styling cues to where this is 2018 as far as the Maserati touch control system which this is based off of for FCA. So again, it looks good. And speaking of that backup camera, I'll put it in reverse. You'll see it show up there. All right, so this was very helpful, I'm sure for this car, um, just having that, but you really just wish they would have replaced everything. Again, it's just one of those things. Now, carbon fiber going all the way across. All right, you have your road slow leather with the Nero stitching, Gran Turismo C Sport badging there. It's, it's a good place to be, guys. I love this thing. And this spec is just, it's perfect for me. It's not too much, you know, but it's just enough. You could do a lot more carbon in here or, you know, change up some of the materials and stuff like that. But 
I think they did a good job with this and yeah, I love it. Big Italian paddle shifters column mounted as always in the back. I mean, you have your old HVAC controls. All right, you have your controls for your top. So to put your top up, put your top down and then your lock and unlock for your doors. Yes, they're up here instead of on the door with your hazard button, your sport mode button there, which we're in right now to open up those exhaust valves, ice, all right, increase efficiency, best miles per gallon, fuel economy, whatever you want there. On the other side here, you guys do have the park off and you have the traction off as well. All right, then you have the controls for that Maserati Touch Control Plus. This was a new setup for 2018 here because this was new for 2018. So they coexist together. And then you have your drive selector there with parking brake there. All right, carbon fiber on this leather gear shift. All right, and you have the cup holders here as well. And then in the armrest, you'll see USB 2.0, you'll see SD and you'll see aux with your lighter there as well with some stowage space. Pretty simple, pretty to the point. Even if you go inside of the glove box, yeah, it's just a little space, a little glove box, but it's there. Um, yeah, this is just a good place to be overall. And with that said, do you guys see how well this has held up? I mean, even the steering wheel looks good. I mean, a 2018 model with, sorry, 17,552 miles. I don't know if I've been saying 15, but this is 17,552 miles, 17,552 miles. And it looks really good. Very taken care of besides those brake calipers. That's the only thing that really spoils it for this Grand Cabrio. But other than that, if that can get fixed, it is not too chunky. I think this will sell pretty well. Let's go take a look at the trunk. All right, so inside the trunk, you can already tell, it's not gonna be a lot of space. This is where it cuts off here because this part needs to raise in order to let that top in and out, all right? So that's gonna be your trunk space right there. So we go to lift her up. You'll notice that, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, so not a lot going on here. You do have a battery tender right there. You're gonna need that just in case you're not using it. Manuals and everything here. Front plate mount as well. All right, that's where the tender will plug in there. And then underneath, if I can get to it, I'm gonna try to move this stuff over and up, uh, up, uh, up, uh, up, uh, hold on, hold on guys. Bear with me here, lift up <laughs> and then here you are for your tire inflate kit here. Tools and everything underneath as well. All right, so you do have a little stowage under there as well, but it's not a ton, okay? So you definitely have to be mindful of that. All right, so we have this laminated uh, sticker here. I tried to get um, out of the sun so there wasn't a glare. So hopefully this works out for you guys. Now let's talk about this Bianco Eldorado exterior paint and the interior done in Rosso Corrado. Now that is $148,000 to start, $148,850 for this Maserati Gran Turismo convertible. Now with that said, after additional options here, looking at a total price of $164,135. Now that's after a $1,500 destination charge, $300 preparation delivery, and a $1,700 gas guzzler tax. So that's a big gas guzzler tax, but for the naturally aspirated V8, which gives you 15 combined city and highway, 13 city and 20 for your miles per gallon. That is the price you gotta pay to play. All right, so your options for this Maserati Gran Turismo C Sport. All right, so colored seat backrest, $900. Red anodized brake calipers, $800. Drilled seats, $850. Aerodynamic pack carbon fiber, $2,500. MC aluminum drive pedals, $565. 20 inch MC shiny titanium alloy wheels, $2,000. Trident stitching in the restraints, um, you also have $500, $570 for that. The stitching for the internal areas, $300. And the carbon MC Sportline interior, $3,300. Now, I know you guys are wondering, all right, if the brake caliper is only $800, no. We'd have to replace the brakes in total, all right? Not just the calipers. So don't think that it's just an $800 fix. It's gonna be a little bit more than that. So with that said, these are your standard options for the Gran Turismo C Sport. All right, so kind of go over that very slowly, probably not in the best way, but hopefully you guys can see it. I'm trying to hold this sticker down so it doesn't blow away with this wind. 
but that is your standard options for this Gran Turismo Sport. Again, big things that you'll notice for the 2018 model is the 8.4 inch MTC, the Maserati Touch Control System with the backup camera. That is a big thing that changed for 2018 because they didn't really want to do much because the Gran Turismo was on its way out the next year and they only made a Spider, which this is, or a convertible um, in 2019. So, all right guys, so 17,000 miles on this 2018 Maserati Gran Turismo C Sport. All right, $164,000 brand new after the three year lease. We may, may do it for around 110. We'll see where it goes. Um, again, the big kicker is the calipers, all right? If those calipers can be fixed, this is gonna be a flawless car. Really, it is. It's gonna be a flawless used Maserati GT, and somebody is really gonna enjoy this spec. Unfortunately, it's not me because I'm not there yet, guys, all right? Maybe once the YouTube channel gets a little bit bigger, um, you know, that will help me out. But until that happens, I have to just appreciate it the way I can, which is showing it here to you guys. So let me know down in the comments below, what do you guys think about this Maserati Gran Turismo C Sport? All right, do you guys think that those calipers aren't a big deal and that you would buy it for $109,000, $110,000, all right, with 17,000 miles? Is this the one? Is this your spec? Let me know down in the comments below. Now, if you guys did enjoy the video today, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Giving the video a thumbs up and a like will help get it up in the rankings. More people can see it and we can have a bigger discussion on this damn near flawless, after three years, Maserati Gran Turismo C Sport. Now with that said, if you guys wanna help further support the channel, always check the links down below. We have a one-time link donation for my PayPal, my Cash App, and my Venmo, just in case you guys wanna donate a dollar or two to the channel. If you wanna help support your boy, I appreciate the love. They can also check out the Ron's Rise merch, just in case you guys wanna get a t-shirt, stickers, hoodies, everything Ron's Rides there. Also on TikTok, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Snapchat, I'm on Instagram. See everything I'm posting, Ferrari, Maserati, and Alfa Romeo, it doesn't always make it here to the channel. Now with that said, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, but click that notification bell so you won't miss one Ron's Rides video. Now with that said, you guys be blessed, have a great day, and we will talk to you guys in the next Ron's Rides video. Peace.